Coach, uh, a couple questions. First off, uh, I do want to ask about the crowd. Uh, they obviously they've done this before, but Larry said he felt like it was the pit, um, and he was he was rather disappointed by it. Can you talk about the crowd first? Well, uh, we know what kind of crowd we have. We don't know what kind of fans we have. I've said it so many times. It's a uh, it's a blessing and honor to be the head coach in New Mexico, and there's a lot of reasons for that. But at the top of that list has always been our fan base. Uh, our fan base is incredible. Uh, they're loud. Um, our guys come out. Uh, they're into the game. Uh, even being in a neutral setting here, they still do the things that they do in the pit. Uh, we're up five. You got the ball. They know to get up because that's a big defensive stop. Um, we get up eight and we have the ball, they get up because they know the difference in being up double figures, what that means. Uh, they're just a very knowledgeable fan base, and we appreciate them, appreciate what they do more than you could possibly imagine. Uh, they're a big part of our program. Another question there, because this is a conference tournament and it's March and there's eyes around the country that haven't seen you guys watching games like this, this isn't the first time you guys have had a rather ugly game um, where another team tried to slow things down. Well, um, yeah, and I, and I guess it's in the eyes of the beholder uh, of what's pretty and ugly. Um, in March, when you win by 13 points, it's to me, it's pretty. Um, you know, we may not have shot the ball well. We've had a lot of games this year we haven't shot the ball well. Um, the key and the identity to this basketball team, I think things change year to year, but our identity has always been the defensive end. Now, we went on this last road trip, um, and we shot the ball pretty well. But our identity really has been what you saw today. We hold a team to eight field goals, both halves. Where they score 22 in one half. They score 24 in the other. Uh, they shoot less than 35%. They get out rebounded. Uh, we took care of the basketball, only turned the ball over nine times. Uh, and we make more free throws than our opponent attempted. That has been who we have been all year long. And I told the guys afterwards, you, you were just who you are. And that's, that's been good enough uh, throughout the non-league. It's been good enough through our league. And I've told them going into this conference tournament, that's who you got to be. Don't be somebody, don't try now that you're in postseason and the hoopla of March, don't all of a sudden try to change your identity. And then when we have games where we shoot the ball well, then we go to another level. But uh, this has really been who we've been through third, most of the 32-game schedule we've played. And then just one quick follow-up to that. People were talking about the 11-minute stretch. If you date or if you go back to the first half, it was actually over 12 minutes that you guys went without a field goal. That's got to be a stretch that has to be concerning at some point. Does well, it not? we're the number one league in the country. Um, we're now 14 and three in it. Uh, it's not easy winning three games against somebody, and we've won two of those games by double digits. And we've held them the last two times. Wyoming hadn't got to 50. Um, you're not going to lose very many games when you hold people to 46 points and 32% shooting. Um, and when you do that, you're going to give yourself a chance to win. And what doesn't show up on stat sheet is toughness. Um, I've got a very tough group. Um, they are a winning group. They, I, look at Kendall Williams. Kendall Williams, player of the year in this league, deservingly so. And he scores, he has one field goal. Uh, he didn't play, and I thought he had a very good game. Uh, we made the we made the swift switch right before halftime. Uh, Gilmore had 11 quick points. He gets one field goal the rest of the way out and shoots four for 17. I think he's a very good player. That switch was Kendall, and Kendall did a great job on him. Uh, you look at Nance and uh, Washington and Cook combined for 17 field goals last night. They score in the 80s. Tonight they score in the 40s, and those three combined for seven field goals. Uh, there's a reason why this team's 27 and five. Um, they don't just execute at the offensive end. They they probably do a better job of executing the game plan and what's set up at the defensive end. And there's a lot to be said about that. Right there. Coach Go ahead. Ben Fredrickson with the Casper Star Tribune. Um, Coach Shiat said that the way Wyoming played tonight was kind of synonymous with with their season. I guess you know you've played them three times now. You, if you guys have, have gone back and forth, you always obviously ended up getting the better of the situation. They've kind of had some ups and downs this year. I just kind of want to get your take on them as a team. And and I know they're they're at times playing shorthanded, but kind of as an opponent. Uh, how would you describe kind of playing them? Well, Larry does a great job. He's like all the other coaches in our league. That's what makes this league so special. We got great coaches, we got great players, uh, and Larry and his staff do a great job. They had a quick turnaround. It's not easy. Um, you know, that's why we play the league. That's why, you know, I was proud of our guys to be the number one seed. It's it's not easy playing the eight nine game and then turning around and playing 
what I think is a really good basketball th team. I, I think we're really good. Um, you know, I think our starting five, I'd put our starting five up, up against anybody. Uh, I, I think we've proven that and who we've played. So that's not easy. And for them to come in and battle, and um, we had them down double figures in the first half. They came back, built it back up in the second half. But um, the thing about Larry's players, they play extremely hard. Uh, they have great pace at both the offensive end, and they really guard you. You know, that's why I'm not real worried about shooting. We shot 40%. We, we've done that a lot this year. I, that doesn't concern me a whole lot because I know we we had a very good defensive team that we were playing against. And I've always thought Wyoming does a very good job at the defensive end. Let's go over here first. Coach Bruce Marshall at Sports Byline, congratulations. Thank so you. You've done a lot in your career, Big Ten in the Valley as a coach. But this league, this year, the diversity of the teams, have you seen in your career a league where you're playing so many different styles of teams too and how that's going to help you as you go to the big dance next week well i hope it does uh the last three games have been just what you're talking about we play nevada who's one style then you go to air force and it's a totally different style and now you play wyoming even in a more different style so uh, we have we see that in our league a lot you know most of our leagues man to man so we have not seen a lot of zone that's something that maybe you get to the national tournament and you get matched up with somebody that's a zone team might be the only thing that we have haven't seen a lot of, uh, but we've played well against uh, zones because, like, excuse me, Air Force is a matchup zone team. We've scored big both of the games we've played against them, so we we do think we're well prepared. I thought this was a big game for us because um, we will go into the national tournament now, regardless of what our record is, regardless of what happens here in the weekend, going into the NCAA tournament, not losing back-to-back -back games, um, and, and that's. That's a big deal when you can um, get that momentum. Uh, we lost that Air Force in a tough game, really a last second shot, and to uh, rebound like this and win by double figures and get back in that winning ways, our 27th win. There's just a lot of good things about this team, and they're a really tight group. Uh, I think they're well prepared. We're healthy right now. Uh, Hugh got banged up a little bit with his neck on a screen, so we got to get him some, uh, some treatment here. But uh, we're pretty healthy, so hopefully we can get through this weekend. Back here. Hey, Coach Lauren again from KOAT. Hi. So, you know, everybody that we're talking to outside, they're excited, of course, about this tournament, but they keep just saying Sweet 16. They skip the rest of March Madness and go straight to Sweet 16. I know you're probably a one step first kind of guy, but you got to be thinking about the tournament right now. How do you think this game bodes for you guys looking forward, and, and what do you think? Well, I think obviously we knew we were in, but uh, staying away from that first round loss or the quarterfinal loss. I, I think that just solidifies what you're going to do with your seeding. We do get to the semifinals now. We're going to be we're in the number one league in the country by RPI standards. So now, if you would happen to slip on the weekend, uh, it's not as big hurting your seed as I think maybe it would be in a quarterfinal loss. Uh, so that's just another hurdle you do. Uh, we understand the Sweet 16 feel. I've been in Albuquerque now six years. I know how bad fans want to get to the Sweet 16. Uh, our program wants to do that. In fact, we haven't talked about the Sweet 16. We've talked about getting as far as we possibly can. It's We feel like it's a tournament that we can do some damage in, but you have to be fortunate. I've been in this business a long time as a coach. I was, I was in it as a player. Uh, we won on the last, my senior year when we won the national championship, we won on the last day of the year and Purdue lost which gave us the number one seed in the tournament, which kept us in Indy and in Cincinnati. Uh, that's a lot different than being in Indiana and getting shipped out west. Um, so you got to get fortunate. you got to get lucky. And then when you get those breaks, you got to take advantage of them. And I will say this is a team that because of the two championships they won a year ago and now winning this league the way they won it, it's a confident group. They believe they can do some things. Doesn't mean we're going to get to that level. Um, Boy, I hope we do, um, but it's not going to take away from our year if we don't. Um, I, I don't want it to be that kind of deal, but we understand the fans. We want to do it probably more for them than we do anything else because we have such a great fan base. Hey, Coach, one last question. Just rewinding a little bit to earlier in the year, you knew this was going to be a good team and the league was going to be tough. You had a very tough non-conference schedule. You look at St. Louis, Cincinnati, right. uh, the Aggies. Um, you didn't shy away from a tough schedule there. How much had, did that help you coming into the Mountain West having played that tough non-league schedule? Well, we, we got fortunate. Uh, scheduling's hard, and we did get fortunate. Um, and teams that we've played have played well and had good years. You know, South Dakota State's in, Valpo's in the tournament. 
Uh, UConn would have been in the tournament if eligible. Uh, we played them. So Cincinnati, they're trying to work them way in, their way in through the Big East tournament. So um, we did. We played a very, very demanding schedule, and it worked out well for us that we stayed healthy and we were able to schedule up and win. And I think our league did that. I think that's why we're the number one league RPI-wise in the country. It wasn't just us. Other teams in our league scheduled up, and then they won. And when you do that, you reap the benefits of it, and that's why our league has been very good top to bottom. Um, you know, the, so I, I hope that prepares us. We literally thought it was a year away. Uh, I'll be honest with you, when you lose Drew Gordon and A.J. Hardeman and Philip McDonald, uh, we didn't see this coming at this level. We returned our entire starting five. Um, so the future is exciting and bright, and yet we got to live in the moment knowing that this is a pretty special team, and we want to play as long as we can.